Some of the most common questions I see in my comments are about root detection and SSL pinning. And in one of the comments I got just last week, somebody asked about both root detection and SSL pinning bypass. And I decided that I might as well go over how to do both in the same app because that is a scenario that you might run into, especially in things like banking apps and things like that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to bypass root detection as well as SSL pinning in the same application. And I'm actually going to show you two different ways to do it because depending on the app you're working with, some methods might work better than others. So if the first time I show you how to do it doesn't work, keep watching and maybe the second one will work better. For demonstration purposes in this video, I'm going to be using the Andro Goat Insecure app, which I've used in some of my videos in the past, and I'm going to be running it in an Android Studio emulator. So this app has all kinds of different security checks and bypasses and things like that that you can play with just for practice. But the two that we're going to be focused on for this video are the root detection and under network intercepting, they have a certificate pinning option. So those are the two checks that we're mostly going to be focused on for this video. First, let's focus on root detection because in most cases, you're probably going to have to bypass root before you even get to the point where you can start intercepting traffic. So let's start there. So the root detection check is pretty simple. There's just a button that says check root. And if we click it, you'll see there's a toast down at the bottom that says device is rooted. And we want to bypass that check. So when we click that button, it'll say it is not rooted. And the first way I'm going to show you to do this is using objection. If you've seen some of my videos in the past, you may remember that I've used objection to bypass SSL pinning in a non-rooted device before. And if you want to learn more about installing objection and getting it up and running, then you can check out that video where I go into a little bit more detail. But in order to run objection for this app, we first need to know the package name. So I'm going to run that smoke test that we've run several times in other videos where I run frida-ps-uia. And in the very first line, you see the Android Goat Insecure app and you see the package name is owasp.sat.agoat. So we are going to run objection dash G, then the package name and then explore. And when we run that, it's going to relaunch the app on the phone and it's going to inject the agent so we can run commands with objection. And to bypass root detection, we're going to run Android root disable. And now if we go back to that root detection check and we click check root, device is not rooted. And we can see over in our terminal that it has returned false for all of those root checks that it may be running. So that's great. Now we have the root detection check bypassed. Now we need to go to the SSL pinning bypass. Under network intercepting, we see three options, HTTP, HTTPS, and certificate pinning. If we run the first one, then we see that request to demo testfire.net, which it tells us in the bottom that that's the request that it's sending. And since this is an HTTP request, we can intercept this with any proxy. We don't need a certificate or anything. And then next we have the HTTPS request. And this request goes to owasp.org over HTTPS. For this one, you would need to install a certificate where you can intercept it with a proxy like Burp Suite, which I've covered in other videos if you want to go back and check that out. And the third one is certificate pinning. And if we click this one, nothing happens. We don't get any requests in our proxy or anything. But if we go back to objection, we can use that same method we used back in my video where I bypassed SSL pinning with objection. We're going to run Android SSL pinning disable. And when we run that, we see that it's overriding all of those certificate pinning checks. And if we open burp again and we click certificate pinning once again, now we see that we are getting that request that we weren't getting before. And if we look back at our terminal, we can see that it did override this pinning check and it did not throw an exception like it was supposed to. So now you can see that by using objection, we were able to both bypass SSL pinning and we were able to bypass root detection in the same app. But maybe your app doesn't work for some reason with objection. Maybe that root check happens before you're able to run that little gadget bypass that we did with objection. Maybe the moment you launch the app, it throws that exception and it crashes. In that case, we can go to the free to code share like we've used in the past. In previous videos, I've shown how if there's something you want to do with Frida, you can just go to the code share and find a script that works for what you want to do. And you can just copy this command and find your binary name and then just run that and it does what you need it to do. But we want to do two different things at the same time with one script. So instead of running it through the code share, 
we're actually going to copy the code and we're going to paste it into a text file on our local machine. And now instead of using the code share like we did before, we can just add dash L and then that local text file that contains that Frida script. And then when we run that script, it once again launches our app and then we can go to the root detection, check root, and the device is not rooted. And you can see that it's bypassing all those checks just like Objection did. But this time we're using that Frida script that we just copied and pasted from the code share. But you may be asking, how does this help us with SSL pinning? All you did was copy the code and run it locally instead of running it through the code share. What does this do to help us with our problem? Well, I'll tell you. One very useful thing about these Frida scripts is you can put them in the same file and run them all at the same time. So we can actually find a, another Frida script, for example, Frida Android Unpinning SSL, which works to bypass SSL pinning. We can copy the text from the SSL pinning bypass script, and we can paste it in that same file where we have our root bypass code. So we can run that same Frida command that we ran before, but this time we're going to have our file with both the script for the root bypass and the SSL pinning bypass. And when we run that, once again, it relaunches the app. And if we go to root detection, check root, device is not rooted. And if we go to network intercepting, we can run the HTTP check. That one is intercepted as expected. We can run the HTTPS check. That one is also intercepted as expected and we can run the certificate pinning check. And that one is also accepted. And when we look back at our terminal, we see that right here is where our script bypassed the root detection check. And then right here, we see that our script bypassed the SSL pinning check. And you can actually do this with any Frida scripts. If there are multiple different things you wanna do with Frida, you can find them in the code share, different scripts to do whatever you're trying to do. And you can just copy and paste them into a single file and run them with Frida like I did with these two scripts right here in this example. So I hope this was helpful. If there are any apps out there that someone's trying to test that has both root detection and SSL pinning, then you can use this to bypass both of those at the same time. And I hope that if there are any other kind of things that people are doing with Frida, this might help you get on the right path to solve those problems as well. Mm -hmm.